OK, so in this tutorial, we're going to start looking at using Spring. In fact, we're going to take our pre-Spring sample and convert it into a Spring sample. Now I've created a copy of the Spring Sample 1 project and called it Initial. So this is more or less the completed one, the Spring Sample 1. And the Spring Sample Initial is the one that I've taken out all the Spring specific bits. And what we're going to do, we're going to kind of work as a buddy team, if you like. And we're going to work through how to add and springify this project. The first thing to notice is that under source main Java, we have a red cross. So let's investigate why that is. And the red cross appears in the client. So let's open that up. Now the main reason is, is that the configuration part has been removed. And the reason I've removed that is because we're no longer using the factory or the object factory class I created earlier. We're going to be using spring specific configuration for this part. On the do something part, where we actually do call some sort of business method. In this case, we're calling the print message on the printer object. This stays exactly the same as it would do in a real world application. We can also take a look at the rest of the sample code. So if we go into the service package, we'll see that all the other classes and interfaces are the same as before. We can open up the message printer. And again, it hasn't changed at all. It's exactly the same. It has an attribute of service, which is of the type message of the day service, which is an interface. We have the implementation of the print message method. And we have this setter method which allows us to inject the message service. OK, so what's our first task? Well, the first task is obviously we need to get rid of this red cross. The reason we have a red cross is because there isn't a printer object. How do we get that? Well, we've got a dependency here on Spring, on the Spring framework, because we don't have a configuration part anymore. What we need to do is to plug in the Spring container. Now, obviously, to use Spring, we need some Spring libraries or jar files is to find those. And on this project, we're using Maven. So we need the Maven dependencies for the Spring jar files. Best place to start looking for that is actually on the Spring website. Fire up our favorite browser and head over to spring.io. This site changes quite frequently, actually. In fact, it used to be called Spring Source, but now they've called it spring.io. If you're watching this and it's changed again, there should be some forward link to take you to the new name of the website or domain name. Let's head over to projects because that's where all the dependencies are. And you see a list of all of all the spring projects. Now the one we're only interested in at the moment is the spring framework because that provides cover and support for dependency injection. I'm not going to bore you by going through all this, uh, introduction here. But if we scroll a bit further down, it actually gives us the Maven dependency XML for the Spring context. And this is exactly what we need. If we put this into our Maven POM file, Maven will go across to Maven Central and it will check all the transitive dependencies for the Spring context and download them and install them in our local directory or repository. So let's select that, copy, and we head back to Spring Tool Suite and we'll paste that into our pom.xml file. So let's open up our pom.xml file here. And don't worry about this build element and the plugin I've got in here. All this is, is basically the Maven compiler plugin and I've configured it so it uses the 1.7 JDK or JRE. Under the dependencies element, we just basically paste in the dependency we copied across from the Spring website, and you can do a Control Shift F, and that will format that up for us. We can hit Save, and then I always go to the root project and do a Maven update project and that will force an update from Maven Central if we don't already have those dependencies in our project or repository. 
We can have a look at the dependency hierarchy now. And as you can see, we've got the spring context and the version is 405 release. And if we click on this small arrow here, that expands down. It shows all the transitive dependencies for the spring context. And on the right hand side here, it shows the resolve dependencies all within compile scope. Now, if this is all fairly new to you, the use of Maven, uh, please check out my course Maven 101. It goes through this and into this in a lot more detail. And at the end of this course, I provide a coupon code that gives you quite a discount. There are also some free tutorials on Maven on my YouTube channel. So please feel free to subscribe at the Den of Programming on YouTube. Another way of checking our dependencies is to go under the Maven dependencies within our project. And you can actually see the jar files that are now held within our project. So that's set up and installed the various jar files we need to use with Spring. But it hasn't resolved this issue of setting up the configuration part of our code. And that's what we'll be doing in the next tutorial, setting up the Spring container, and then we'll start looking at configuring the container so we can actually use this message printer object.